Conditional formatting in Excel is a colorful feature. It's rich in options and possibilities, and it lets you give special emphasis to cells based on their content. In this particular worksheet, maybe we want the years of service to stand out a little bit differently. Let's click column F, and then on the Home tab in the ribbon, section called Styles, we see the option Conditional Formatting. And the pop-up reminds us how we could easily spot trends and patterns in data using bars, colors, icons, etc. Click Conditional Formatting. Now, we simply might want to highlight cells that are greater than or less than. For example, how about all those people who've been here more than 10 years? Greater than? And automatically, without even us doing anything, we see a choice here for eight years. Let's make it be greater than 10. We're seeing color highlighting already, which we might like, or on the other hand, we might choose the drop arrow and pick some of the other options here that we might consider. And if that were not enough, we could then choose our own format, a custom format. So possibly maybe we'll just go with green fill this way, click OK. That's one simple way to use the feature. It is dynamic. The higher dates here need to get adjusted and one of these numbers gets altered so that it drops below that, then it's not going to be highlighted anymore. Or if in this case, if we change this to be 01, it'll be 11 years, and that will turn green as the others are. So that's certainly one option to use. Even more colorfully, though, is this idea with using conditional formatting. Now, if we want to use other features like, say, data bars, the existing format stays in place along with these. Now, I don't think we want to use the two together. So when you are making changes to a conditional formatting set of rules that are already in place, you might want to clear the rules, as it's called, from the selected cells, then return to the feature and possibly consider some other options. I think we probably wouldn't use the top bottom rules in this particular case, but do recognize this is another possibility. Possibly with salary data, which is in column H, we might later consider highlighting just the cells that are above average or below average. But let's take a look at data bars. As we slide over the options, recognize that we see bars appearing here. And the so-called live preview lets us see what is about to happen if we make these choices. Notice how the bars overlap the data. The quick visual read is the wider the bar, the more years the person has been here. And we can also use another set of choices here called solid fill. Making the column wider may or may not be something to do. It's still going to overlap the numbers, however. There's also a way to hide those numbers, as we'll see. So possibly you just want to use bars without numbers. Another option here is to use color scales. And some of these options are incredibly subtle. The differences between some of the shadings here are not very obvious, and there are quite a few color choices here. Excel analyzes the data in question. It analyzes how many years people have been here and divides these into various groups. And although we can't see all the entries here, you can probably see on the screen that years one and two, as we see in rows four and five, are a dark green. But over in row three there, it's a lighter green. And so as we move toward more years, it leans more toward the yellow color. Even more colorfully, perhaps, is what we call icon sets. Using these buttons right here, this automatically divides the data into thirds and then displays an icon. So Excel's analyzing the information. I think this choice might make sense possibly with the salary column. So jump over to column H here, conditional formatting, icon sets. If we choose this option here, it will divide the data into fourths. So Excel analyzes the data or it divides it into fifths using this scheme. Now, possibly you might want to make a presentation where you just want to show one of the three arrows here. Let's suppose we make that choice. So now we have a display. What if you really didn't want to show the actual salary? You just wanted to give a general idea. And depending upon the audience, the information tends to be somewhat confidential. So maybe you don't want to display the salary. One quick fix, by the way, would be to make the font white. 
but a better choice would be using conditional formatting techniques and not exactly obviously located, but as we go back into the choices here, we can use a feature called manage the rules. So this allows us to make changes. It does point to a whole other aspect of this that would take quite a while to explain about fine tuning by way of conditional formatting, but we can edit this rule and you'll see a choice in here, show icon only. Click OK and OK. And now for display purposes, we probably want to center that as well. Now the formula bar still displays the result, but we simply recognize that some people are in the bottom third, the middle third, or the top third salary wise. So again, you have the choice here of hiding the data and displaying the icons or the colors only, or showing both as we've seen. And this is a rich feature. We're only skimming the surface of some of the capabilities here. I think you see the basic idea. We're changing the look of the data based on its content. And you can use these for text entries as well. If in column D, if you want the hourly entries here or the contract entries to stand out more prominently, we could use conditional formatting here, highlight the cell rules, the cells that are equal to, and we'll simply put in the word contract here. And you see immediately how they're being highlighted. If we like that choice, that color scheme, fine, we'll just click OK. So it's a great feature for adding emphasis to portions of a worksheet.